Welcome to Everyday Links User. Today I am going to be discussing virtual machines versus dual booting. Which should you use and why? So this isn't going to be one of those videos where I say it depends at the end. Um, I have a clear um, opinion on this and it has changed over the past 10 years. So when I first started using Linux, um, I used to think dual booting was the way to go. Uh, I could have my bare bones hardware with Windows on one partition and my Linux on another partition. And whilst that was good then, I'm not so sure it's a good idea now. The When you think about why you want to dual boot, or um, you have to think of your motivation for doing so. Now, quite often, uh, one of the motivations for dual booting is you want to try Linux, but you still have reliance on Windows features. Therefore, um, having a partition with Windows on it and a partition with Linux on it seems a good way to go. You can boot into either of the, the systems you want. So the, the, it seems like a good win. Um, but you are cutting up your hard drive into chunks. I did a video previously uh, where I created a dual boot version of Windows and uh, Endeavor OS. And so what I ended up with is I've got a SSD here. And there, there were other ways of doing this. I could have used my uh, disk one. Um, but I've got a large portion of my disk uh, assigned to Windows and the rest of my disk assigned to Linux. And when I boot up my machine and this will happen to anyone who dual boots. There's always one you're going to boot into more than the other. So for me, um, I use Linux 99.9% .9 of the time at home. So to boot into Windows, the only thing I use Windows for is videos like this or for doing timesheets for my work because they, they only use Windows software to do that. So that's it. That, that is my only motivation for using Windows. So if you think about this PC at this moment in time, I've got almost 90 gigabytes of drive assigned to an operating system that I do not use. Likewise, you might be in a situation where you are just trying to use Linux and get used to it. But most of the time you use Windows. So you've got a chunk of disk space. Now disk space is kind of cheap, but you've still got this whole section of your drive assigned to Linux. And what if you want to try a different version of Linux? Well, you could uh, install and replace this partition here with the new version of Linux you want to do. And there are, there are issues with that, not insurmountable, but um, you are relying on different uh, Linux installers to, to play well with the partitioning. And each one uses their own subtle tool for um, doing the partitioning. And it's easy to make mistakes. And you're only one bad mouse click away from wiping either your Windows partition or your Linux partition. And then you're in a mess. Uh, this is why I always recommend before doing anything with installing Linux or um, anything to do with partitioning, you always back everything up. And I mean absolutely everything because um, you need to be able to get back to um, the point in time if something bad happens. So the other thing you could do is you could split the disk down further. Now I'd struggle with this one because there's only 120 gig um, SSD in the first place. But if, say it was a um, 500 gig um, SSD that I had here, um, I could, uh, at the first time, I might have had Windows at 250 gig and the, the Linux at 250. So what I might do then is either split those Windows a bit further or split the Linux a bit further and have... 125 gig for one, 125 gig for the other. But every time you're doing this, you're cutting your disk down into smaller and smaller chunks. Now, not many people want to dual boot um, three, four, five uh, Linux distributions. Um, that's extreme. But you can see the problem is that you're now cutting your disk into smaller and smaller chunks. And, and the main risk of this is that you run out of drive space when you're using one of them. And it's then harder to... Um, fix that problem because to fix a problem you're going to have to mess around with one of the other operating systems.
So f- for that reason, um, I actually think that using virtual machines is a better solution because if I want to use a virtual machine, um, I can use something like VirtualBox here. And I can create as many of these uh, Linux distributions as I want. And when I'm uh, creating them, I say how much hard disk I'm going to give, how much memory am I going to give up to the system. And when I'm finished with that disk, uh, when I'm finished with that uh, virtual machine, um, I can either not run it, so it's not running, um, so it's not using any resources at all in terms of memory, uh, or if I want my disk space back, and just delete it, and then I've got my disk space back. If you think here, um, I want to delete my Linux. Um, if I just delete that now, my system's not going to boot up because um, my UEFI settings are, boot, uh, are set to boot to uh, my Endeavor web menu, and if that's not there, it's just going to it's just going to fall over. So before I can get rid of that Linux partition, I have to go into my UEFI settings and I have to turn off the boot, uh, put Windows as the main boot option again. Then I have to come in here, I have to right click, I have to delete the volume, and then I have to enlarge my Windows volume uh, using the extend volume. And I'll, I'll do a full video on this um, shortly, but the, the point is the hassle of getting rid of a Linux version, uh, Linux dual boot compared with getting rid of a Linux virtual machine is um, chalk and cheese. Virtual machines are so much easier to manage um, in terms of um, your underlying operating system. Uh, you put it on top and it basically is, it's almost running like a bit of software. Uh, there are downsides to using virtual machines. Obviously it's using your um, you're basically having an operating system on top of an operating system. So um, if you've only got four gigabytes of RAM in the first place, then it's it's harder to run a virtual machine because your your underlying operating system um, is using um, a certain amount of RAM, and then your virtual machine needs a certain amount of RAM to run. So you're you're basically halving, or, well, not necessarily halving. It depends on how much memory you've got. You're you're having to give a chunk of your memory away, a chunk of your CPU away to the underlying operating system, such as uh, Windows, or if Linux is your main operating system and you've got virtual machines on Linux, then whatever that Linux is running, that you, you always have to rely on the underlying hardware um, to use some of the resources. Uh, the, the other downside of using a virtual machine is when I boot into a a dual boot system um, I get the the grub menu comes up and it um, shows me uh, I can choose from the menu uh, do I want to boot into Endeavor or do I want to boot into Windows or if I've got three or four I could boot into any one of the three or four menu options available uh, when it comes to virtual machines uh, you, you're always going to boot into the main operating system first which is Windows then you're gonna have to start up your virtual manager so uh, I'm using VirtualBox here um, but I've also got Hyper-V installed as well. And you can see I've got um, some Hyper-V virtual machines here as well uh, with different versions of Linux. So um, I've got all these mainly because uh, I've been doing videos um, of this sort of thing. But using virtual machines, you can delete, um, you can manage them. You do have to boot the, the main operating system first though. But this goes back to the, your motivation for wanting to dual boot or use a virtual machine in the first place. Why are you doing this? Why are you not running Linux as the main operating system? Now, there are a, a number of reasons for this. Uh, one, you might use Windows for something you can't do on Linux as easily. Um, now, gaming's come on quite a long way um, in, in Linux terms, but um, I know a lot of Windows, uh, a lot of gamers still like to use Windows, so that's one motivation um, for dual booting or uh, using virtual machines for Linux. And another is you might not use Linux all that much. You might only want to use Linux uh, for certain things at certain times. Um, for instance, a good a good uh, example of this is using Kali Linux. Uh, 
Um, you certainly don't want to use um, Kali Linux necessarily as um, your base operating system. You, it's the sort of thing that you would um, boot into either as a virtual machine or on its own hardware or as a dual boot, but you wouldn't use that as your day-to-day -day driver. Um, I, I w certainly wouldn't recommend it. So uh, another reason, um, so you might be just learning Linux. Um, so you might want to use Linux just um, to see it, to come up, to get up to speed with it. So um, using a virtual machine for this um, has to be better than using the dual boot. Chunk it up half. I mean, I mean, if you're a novice to Linux and you're already getting into the realms of dual booting, you're doing something that isn't necessarily a novice task to start with. Uh, so using a virtual machine has got to be easier. Um, you're, you're literally downloading the ISO and then clicking new, choosing your name, picking the uh, where the ISO image is, and then setting up the hardware for it. And, and it's a it's a it's a wizard. Uh, you just fill in the wizard, click finish, and then you can just start up the virtual machine, and you're in, and you're using Linux. Whereas if you're dual booting, you're uh, cutting up your hard drive, making yourself some unpartitioned space. You're having to boot into the um, live image. You're having to run the installer. You're having to get into the partition screen and understand what you're doing with the partition wizard. And they differ from distribution to distribution. And it it seems of, um, a much harder task for somebody who just wants to try Linux out for learning purposes. Uh, the, the next thing I want to discuss is what happens when you decide, actually, um, now I want to use Linux full time. I don't want to use uh, Windows anymore. Now, this is a problem in both cases, um, because if you've got a virtual machine, converting that virtual machine into an ISO that you can install um, as the main operating system um, it's it's not trivial. It's um it, it's quite a task. So you're you're better off just installing Linux um across the whole disk. Um but at least your disk is in one continuous um partition. In in dual boot you've got two partitions already. In my case I've got four because I've got the EFI and I've got a recovery partition. Um but you've got multiple partitions in the first place. Now most Linux installers can say use entire disk. So if you are installing it and you want to make it the the, um, the main operating system, you can just choose use entire disk and it's going to wipe out all those partitions and just create them in the way that the Linux requires them to be. So f whether you're using a virtual machine, whether you're using dual boot, if you want to get rid of Windows and make Linux your main operating system, then um, the challenge is there for both of them. You're not... Uh, you could, you're, you're really going to have to start again. You're not going to be in your dual boot system and able to get rid of that Windows partition. And then, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's non-trivial to then try and get that partition over to there. So you've then got the full disk space available for that Linux partition. You are just better off reinstalling Linux in that case. Um, obviously, back up your files and then you can restore them um, into whichever Linux you choose. As I said at the beginning, um, if I had to choose between using a virtual machine or dual boot, I would 99.9% .9 of the time choose a virtual machine over dual booting. Um, personally, I would choose 100% of the time just to make Linux my main operating system, but that's just me. But 99.9%, .9 if, if I was going to have um, a Windows and Linux living side by side, then I would use a virtual machine um, because... And they're easier to manage. Um, and you can expand the amount of um, disk space you use for the virtual machine, um, and you can you can manage it um, using a wizard. You, you're not having to um, mess around with your partitioning and stuff, and you're not having to worry about are you one Windows update away from your um, bootloader not working or Windows messing around on you. 
and it does happen. Uh, it, it does happen where you, you know you're due booting, and suddenly a Windows update comes in, and suddenly you're not booting into your Linux anymore. It's booting straight into Windows, and you're back into the UEFI settings. What trying to fix it and trying to get it working. So um, the only time I would use dual boot over um, using the virtual machine is if I haven't got enough resources to run a virtual machine. Um, uh, and I would say that would be the case if you've got four gigabytes or less of RAM. So that's the end of the video. Um, thank you for watching. If you liked it, click the like button and click the subscribe button. I've got more videos coming up on this. Uh, previously, I created a dual boot system of Endeavor and Windows. I'm going to show you how to remove the dual boot of Endeavor. Uh, so basically it's a how to remove Linux if you finish using it as a dual boot um, because um, there comes a time that not everybody wants Linux and they decide they don't want it. Uh, another video I've got coming up is about Windows subsystems for Linux and then we've got more reviews coming up in the future. So thank you for watching. Uh, see you next time on Everyday Linux User.